if you can't fix the application, you might as well change the rule in court. R-E-C, F-C-C today, B-G Bradley. This is FCC Today, the podcast for Thursday, February 3rd. 2022. The FCC has filed a brief before the Ninth Circuit Court in the case of Foundation for a Beautiful Life versus FCC. FBL was originally the permittee of KQEKLP, Cupertino, California. Previously, the FCC had determined that the station was constructed at an unauthorized location. As a result, the FCC determined that the original construction permit had expired. This turned into a legal battle with the FCC that ended up in the D.C. Circuit Court. The D.C. Circuit punted the matter back to the FCC in which the commission upheld the Media Bureau's actions related to the CP. On December 2, 2021, FBL filed a brief before the Ninth Circuit, this time regarding the outcome of the LPFM Technical Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, MB Docket 19-193. In this proceeding, the FCC enacted several rule changes, including the REC Network's requested extension of the minor move distance for low-power FM stations from 5.6 to 11.2 kilometers or further if there is contour overlap. In implementing the new rules, the FCC stated that the new rules would retroactively apply to all pending applications that did not already have some kind of staff action against them. The same policy was used by the FCC in the adoption of the revised FM translator interference rules, MB Docket 18-119. In FBL's brief, they had stated that if the policy had been allowed to apply to their application, which at the time was going through an application for review, they could have specified the unauthorized site, which was about 5.7 kilometers away. In response, the FCC stated that the retroactive policy establishes a definitive cutoff point for transition to the new requirements, promotes administrative efficiency, and provides a clear guidance to applicants. The FCC also points out the incident in March 2020 when FBL notified the FCC that they resumed broadcasting, citing the COVID-19 emergency, in which the Media Bureau promptly sent a cease operation order. Persons who engage in unlicensed broadcasting are excluded from being a party to an LPFM application pursuant to the Local Community Radio Act of 2010. FBL's intended operation of the LPFM station is suspected to be part of a chain of stations operated by Sound of Hope Radio Network, which is alleged to have ties with New Tang Dynasty Television and the conservative publication The Epoch Times. There are four LPFM stations, including KQEA and KQEB LP in San Francisco, as well as KQSG and KQEV in Southern California. California. Objections to the license renewal has been filed against the Southern California stations, alleging that both stations have connections to New Tang Dynasty, as well as the stations running commercials. In response to the objection, the Emperor's Circle of Shen Yun, licensee of KQSGLP El Monte, California, admits that there is an affiliation with Sound of Hope, but denies any connection with NTD. Despite most California renewals being granted already, the FCC has not acted on the renewals of these four stations, including the San Francisco stations, which have no pending objections filed. REC Networks had participated in proceedings objecting to FBL's original applications, as well as opposing FBL's petition for reconsideration in MB Docket 19193. A $7,000 dinger has been issued to Magnolia State Broadcasting, licensee of WMOXAM Meridian, Mississippi. The Media Bureau states that WMOX failed to timely file their renewal application, which was due on February 3, 
2020, resulting in the license to be canceled on June 1st. Five days later, WMOX sought reinstatement of the license, which the FCC granted. The Media Bureau stated that WMOX continued to operate the station after the license had expired without obtaining any kind of special temporary authority in violation of Section 301 of the Communications Act. The adjusted $7,000 forfeiture includes fines for the late renewal filing and unauthorized operation. WMOX has 30 days to dispute the NAL or pay the fine. Voicemail spam? Yes, that's a thing. The ability for spammers, I mean telemarketers, to bypass ringing someone's phone and being able to leave advertising in voicemail. A company called All About the Message has filed a petition for declaratory ruling that the delivery of a message directly to a consumer's voice mailbox is not considered a call that is protected by the Telephone Customer Protection Act. Chairwoman Rosenworcel is proposing a declaratory ruling in order which would find that so-called ringless voicemails are in fact calls that require prior express consent from the consumer. This declaratory ruling will require a vote from the full commission prior to adoption. FCC Today. FCC Today, the podcast is available through Podbean, TuneIn, iHeart, Spotify, and other great places where you can get podcasts. Stay in touch with the Media Bureau in real time at FCC.today. FCC Today, the podcast, is a production of REC Networks, always on at RECNET.com. I'm Michelle Bradley, SBE Certified Broadcast Technologist. Thanks for listening. Stay safe. REC. REC.